Hello, in this video I want to talk about speed limiters and why they are utterly essential for road safety. So basically a speed limiter is just a device you stick on a car and it stops you from going past a preset speed, which is obvious. They're a little bit more articulate than that because obviously speed limits vary. So traditionally you would have seen these in commercial vehicles like lorries and there's a growing momentum now to make these mandatory in passenger vehicles as well. Why could that be, I wonder? Because high speed is a major factor in traffic collisions, fatalities and limiting it could save countless lives. So, road traffic accidents rank among the leading causes of death worldwide. According to the World Health Organization, tens of thousands of people die every year due to collisions. Factors like driver distraction, poor road conditions and mechanical failures do play roles, but speed constantly tops the list. Why? So speed gives you less time to react. The faster you drive, the less time you have to react to sudden changes. Obviously, as well as that impact severity, uh, you know, you, it's kind of, it's, it's an exponential scale, so twice the speed is four times the impact, as far as I know. So how do speed limiters help? They remove the possibility of going just a bit over the speed limit uh, by capping the speed at the legal threshold. This would significantly reduce the chances and severity of collisions. In effect, speed limiters act like a built-in safety net. So how do they work? Well, modern speed limiters often rely on a combination of GPS data and road sign recognition. The GPS integration would use the car's onboard system and it would just use obviously like map data and stuff to, to know this legal speed limit for that road that you're on. As well as that, we have camera based recognition because sometimes you can have temporary speed limits, etc. So that would work pretty well in terms of, um, you know, expecting the unexpected. And then once the car hits the limit, you can't go any faster. It's as simple as that. It works really well and obviously sometimes people who could kind of creep over the speed limit, it would just stop them from doing that unconsciously. There is a version called Intelligent Speed Assist as well, which is a variant that alerts drivers when they exceed the speed limit and can automatically reduce engine power if the warnings are ignored. While some worry about potential glitches or signal failures, the technology has advanced rapidly with multiple sensors to avoid reliance on any single data source. Speed limiters don't just enhance safety, they also offer environmental and economic benefits. Lower emissions is one of them. Driving more slowly or at optimized speeds cuts fuel consumption and reduces carbon emissions. Some people would argue that going slowly uses more fuel because when they reduced the speed limit from, from 30 to 20, I had to go in a higher gear, but that, that's complete crap. Going slower uses less energy because you need more energy to propel something faster. It's, it's basic physics. Obviously, you get reduced wear and tear on your vehicle as well. Keeping your speed down helps to kind of, um, you know, help your components last a bit longer, etc. They're under less strain and saves you a lot of money on maintenance, potentially. Obviously, you save a good bit of money on fuel as well because you're not, um, you know, like I said, you need more energy to go faster, so you're going to use less fuel if you go slower. It's just as simple as that. And it's not just about safety, so, you know, those who watch the bottom line or care about the planet, speed limiters could really help out with that as well. Let's address some potential objections. And people are going to have objections because you just have to look at any kind of driving or cycling page on Facebook to see the, the silly things that people come up with. Number one, loss of personal freedom. Some people argue that if you can't drive as fast as you like, your freedom is being restricted. Well, to be honest with you, if I want to go out and wave a machete around, maybe, and I'm not allowed to do that, is my freedom restricted? Or is it just for the good of everyone? So that's, that's bunk. Uh, dependence on tech. Critics worry drivers might pay less attention if the car auto-regulates speed. Maybe they might do, but that sort of driver is probably going to pay less attention anyway, so they're better off having a little bit more uh, kind of restrictions on, on their ability to exceed the speed limit and endanger everyone else. Emergency situations. People fear they won't be able to accelerate out of danger. To be honest with you, uh, most cars haven't got the power for that anyway, unless you've got a big powerful thing and, you know, take it to a track. Uh, the systems allow kind of temporary overrides for genuine emergencies and are calibrated to support safe mergers on highways. So that, that's, that's good as well. I mean, that, that covers that. And to be honest with you, you need brakes in most emergency situations, not acceleration. I mean, if, if you're stuck stationary on a road and you see in your rearview mirror a car coming up behind you, hell for leather, you're not going to be able to accelerate out of that unless you're, you know, in, in some kind of drag fuel, top fuel dragster because cars just can't accelerate that quickly. Neither can motorbikes, to be fair. You know, but they can break a lot faster than they can accelerate. So yeah, emergency situations one, I'd say that's bunk. Um, the retrofit costs, well, I think the government should pay for it, to be honest. If they, if they want people to do it, they have to just pay for it. Because, um, you know, to, to, to be forced to kind of pay for your own equipment in that car, if they're going to do that, would I think it would be wrong. So um, yeah, definitely, you know, the retrofit costs should be, there should be some government scheme. Anyway, why act now? Because the urgency is clear. Roads are very congested. High speed crashes put multiple lives at risk. Meanwhile, the technology is here, mature and increasingly cost effective if implemented. Lives saved, 
better driving culture and environmentally friendly. I, I, I see no issues. Legislation is already moving in this direction anyway. The EU, for example, requires intelligent speed assist in new cars. This sets the stage for broader adoption worldwide. So there we go. We've covered um, what they are, how they work, and the benefits they offer, and why their time is now. There will always be resistance to new regulations. There was there was resistance to seatbelt regulations. I mean, people are just people are just idiots. Um, the data and the real world success stories are hard to ignore. Ultimately, adopting speed limiters is about prioritizing safety, saving money, and reducing our environmental footprint. All worthwhile goals. So, thanks for watching today. Ride, drive, walk, train, fly safe, and I will catch you in the next video. Ciao.